Number 63. Construct the position graph for the subway shuttle train as shown in figure 2.18a. That's over on the right hand side here. Your graph should show the position of the train in kilometers from t equals 0 to 20 seconds. You will, need the you will need to use the information on acceleration and velocity given in the examples for this figure. All right, so this um, acceleration graph is the acceleration graph given um, back in the chapter. And the only other piece of information um, we need here, I think, is that the velocity of the train, let's assume as it um, starts at its initial displacement, let's assume that the velocity of the train is equal to zero meters per second. Okay, so let's try to construct, um, we can basically just use the uh, average acceleration uh, graph to help us construct the velocity graph first. Okay, so it looks like the average acceleration, if I were to look at this black line, it appears that it uh, might be about 1.8, what would you say? That sounds about right, 1.8 meters per second squared. Right, so I'm going to use the average velocity to help construct my um, velocity graph. So let's draw a graph. Straight line, straight line, and this is going to be the velocity. I'm going to say a V versus T graph. Okay, so time is uh, on the x-axis, and that's in seconds. Velocity is on the y-axis, that's meters per second. Now we know that the velocity is zero when the time is zero. Okay, great. Now let's look at the acceleration graph and let's look at where the acceleration is one. Again, I'm just going to use the average value of the acceleration. So what's the acceleration at one second? 1.8, right? Meters per second squared. So if I were to use the formula that the acceleration is equal to velocity over time, and I plug in the average acceleration of 1.8, and I know that occurs at one second, then I can calculate the velocity, right? of that object, assuming it was starting at zero, which is what we assumed. So the velocity here at one second will be 1.8. Okay, so let's go to the velocity graph and let's plot here's number one, and let's say here's number two, okay? And let's say here's number one. So it appears that the velocity is gonna, the dot, the point will be somewhere around here. Okay, great, now let's move on to the next point. All right, let's now look at the point of uh, two seconds, right? So again, the average velocity, uh, excuse me, the average acceleration is still the same, right? It's still 1.8. So if I were to now create another formula here, the acceleration is 1.8. That equals V over now two seconds, right? So what would, what would we get here? We would get a value of 3.6 for the velocity, right? Okay, so now let's go to our velocity graph. Let's graph the number two on the x, and then we gotta go up to now 3.6. So this looks like it'd be about where three is. This looks like it would be around where four is. And we get a number here, right? Or a dot, I should say, a dot right about there. All right, now if, we, if you were to extrapolate this, I'm not gonna keep going in terms of the math, but you'll notice the only value that's gonna change here is the numbers down here, right? It's gonna be a three, and then a four, and then a five, etc. Okay, so, um, I know that being the case that these values of the velocity are gonna increase incrementally and then they're gonna increase by 1.8 every time. All right, so that kind of gives me a little insight now as to where the next point should be. So if I go and I graph three, now what I'm gonna do is essentially take the value of 3.6, which was the velocity, and just add 1.8 to it. And that comes out to 5.4, so my next point will be somewhere around 5.4. So it looks like it would be somewhere about, I don't know, here, right? And that should do it now. I can now create a nice line, and if we notice, this line should be linear, okay? Oop, one of the dots is a little off, but that works, all right? So it's a nice linear line. That's always going to be the case, all right? Whenever you have an acceleration graph that looks like this, your velocity graph will always be linear and increasing, okay? Now let's look at the, uh, now let's look at a graph. So this was velocity versus time. Now let's look at a graph of position versus time, okay? So uh, let's draw some axes here. 
y-axis, whoop, it's a little crooked, y-axis, x-axis. Again, time and now position or displacement, right, in meters is going to be on the left, on the y-axis, and then seconds here down at the bottom on the x-axis. So now we're essentially going to do the same thing, okay, uh, but now we have to uh, use the information about velocity to help us understand position, okay? So, um, remember this was this value right here was essentially velocity at one second, okay? This was essentially the velocity at two seconds, right? The 5.4 would have been the velocity at three seconds, etc. So we'll, we'll, help, we'll use that to help us um, understand, all right, what's going on. So, again, if the velocity was zero at the beginning, I'm also going to assume that the position was zero as well. Um, even though, I mean, here, if you look at the picture, it's showing that it's starting at 4.7. It doesn't really matter. I mean, we're just trying to get the general gist of what the graph will look like. All right, so let's just assume it's going to start at zero. So now, um, what's, the, what's a general position formula or a general velocity formula, right? Well, velocity we know is equal to position or displacement over time. Reworking this formula to solve it for x, it would simply be that the position is equal to the velocity times time. Okay, great. So in order to find my position, I need to know the velocity and the time. So let's look. So what's the, so let me change the color here. So what is the position at time one, when time is one? In order to figure this out, I would need to know the velocity, correct? So do we know the velocity when the time is one? Well, yeah, right, we, we do. What is it? Well, here it is, right? We found it, it's 1.8. So this is simply 1.8, okay? Now, does that make sense? Well, let's see. So x1 is equal to 1.8. Okay, so let's plot it. So now we'll plot the point here. So this is one. And <clears throat> this will be, we'll say that this is point one here, this will be point two, okay, et cetera. So we have a point that's right about here. Okay, great. How about now let's do the next one. What about when the position is two or the position at time two, we would have to know the velocity at time two, right, which was 3.6. And then that would be multiplied by um, the time value, right, of two. So what does that work out to be? So this is 3.6 times 2. And that works out to be 7.2. Okay, so let's plot that. So this would be 2. And now this is going all the way up here, right? So it looks like we're flying off the graph. Okay, so I don't know. Does this sound reasonable? Well, let's do a check. Right? So how would we check something like this? Well, maybe what we can do is we can use an alternative formula, right? So what other formulas do we know of kinematics that might talk about position? Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, we do know that formula, right? The change in displacement is equal to the initial velocity times time plus one half a t squared. Oh, where's the t? There it is. Okay, so let's see what happens when I plug in my initial velocity of zero because that's what it's starting at. So that term drops out. Right, remember, I, that's what I assumed here at the start. The initial velocity is zero. So that whole term goes to zero. Then it's plus one half. The acceleration in the problem was we found it to be 1.8 meters per second. And now the time, let's say, is one second. Right, because I want to find the position at one. So let's see what it works out to be. So take out the calculator. 0. 0.5 times 1.8 and then times one squared is just itself. So wait a minute. This now came out to 0.9 meters. Hmm, that's weird. So this told me when the time is one, it should be 0.9 meters. And what I did over here told me that the value should be 1.8. So what was the mistake, guys? Did you catch it? The mistake is this. It's this value right here. It's not simply the velocity at time one or two, it's the average velocity over the period, okay? So what does that mean? Well, 
if at, let's go back to the velocity graph, if at zero seconds it was zero, and then at one second it was 1.8, what was the average velocity? Well, you'd say it should be simple, right? Zero plus 1.8 over two. What does that work out to be? Oh, 0.9. Well, not meters, but 0.9 meters per second. Interesting. Wait a minute. Didn't I just find 0.9? Yeah. Right? And then what's this value over here in terms of uh, the velocity? If I were to plug it in and then use the time of 1, what would it be? 0.9 times 1 is 0.9. All right? So you have to be very careful when you use these formulas, okay? This velocity here is not just simple, it's average velocity. Okay? So just keep that in mind. So this work... I was trying to see if you guys were going to uh, catch that, okay? I also wanted to show you um, how to, in case you go down a wrong path, how you might be able to say, mm, let me check it in another way. Well, do we know any alternative formulas? Sure we do. We know this set. Now you're getting two different answers. So what's going on? All right, that's because this formula involves the average velocity, okay? So... Um, we can continue using that formula, it doesn't matter. Um, or we can use the formula of the displacement. Okay, so let me just erase these points, right? So now the first point should be 0.9. So at x is equal to 1, excuse me, when time is equal to 1, the position was 0.9. We just found that out over here. Now let's see what happens when time is 2. So let's do another formula here. So change in position is equal to the initial velocity times time plus one half at squared. So the change in position is gonna be, remember this term is gonna be zero because the initial velocity was zero. So this just works out to one half times uh, 1.8 and now times two squared, All right? So let's see, take out the calculator, 0.5 times 1.8 times 4. 3.6. So 3.6 meters. Okay, so that's going to be the distance when the time is 2. Right? So when time is 2, the distance will be 3.6. Okay, so let's graph that. So here's 3, here's 4. And this is looking now a little more reasonable. Right? Maybe it should be about there. Let's go out one more, okay? Let's go to 3. I'm going to do the calculation um right over here. So I'll do it right here. So remember, x is equal to vit, but the velocity, the initial velocity is zero. So I'm just going to simplify it to one half at squared in this case, just because I'm short on room. So it's 1.8 times now 3 squared. And what do we get? So 0.5 times 1.8 times 3 squared. We get 8.1. So 8.1 meters. Okay, so now this is the distance or displacement when time is three. So let's go to the value of three on the graph and let's go up to about where eight would be. Five, six, seven, eight is gonna be somewhere up here, right? So it's always, eh, always run out of room. Let me just erase that. So this is again the P versus T graph and the line will extend a little bit, okay? And now we're going to plot the point up here somewhere. So what's the shape of this graph now? Well, it's hardly linear, right? Because if it were linear, I would have to like start the line here somewhere, right? And the points are a little bit, I'm, I'm off by a little bit, but not by that much, right? So the graph is actually going to have this type of a shape to it. Okay. I could have done a little better there. Okay. It's a, it's a nice increasing curve. So this will always be the case whenever we have a positive acceleration. So whenever the acceleration graph looks like this, the velocity graph will look like this, and the position graph will look like this, always. All right, guys, thanks for checking it out. Hopefully this helped. Remember, always consider, do the, do the numbers make sense? If, they, if they're sounding a little large, Maybe try a different way or an alternative formula. Maybe there's something you might have missed. All right. Um, again, that'll help. You know, having those thoughts in your mind will help get you to that A level. All right, guys. Thank you. And please remember to subscribe.